Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you like this uh, post, press like on the bottom. Over here I have uh, Governor Gary Jufa with me. We always talk about uh, mentoring kids. Um, I just wanted to ask one question to the Governor. Thank you, Governor, for being on this uh, page. Basically, I wanted to ask you, a lot of kids want to know how you became Governor. Um, I usually talk about goals and ambitions and how to achieve them. Uh, basically, in, in, in two or three minutes, if you can tell the kids how you became governor, was it always your passion to be governor? And what, what kind of steps did you take to be where you are today? Well, look, Stephen, firstly, hello, everybody out there, uh, kids, adults, whoever may be listening. Follow Stephen, okay? Tune into his YouTube uh, channel, subscribe. Uh, I'll be a regular on his channel, so we can talk about all types of things that, uh, you know, are of interest to you and I and uh, in regards to our country, uh, this beautiful country that we're all passionate about. Stephen, look, I never intended to be a governor. When, when I was at university, I still didn't know what I wanted to be. You know, in fact, most people still have no idea what they really want to be. They're just going with the flow, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. When I was at university, I wanted to own a P&D. That was my dream. That's right. I said, somehow, I make it through university, get a job, save up money, and, and put together the best PMD in my province that have good music, that have good seats. Because I used to go up and down that road, so bumpy. four hours to Popular from Kogoda, yeah. is worst road, bumpy, yeah. you know, and uh, you, you get sick by the time at the end of the journey because of you, you know, breathing in all that dust and yeah. fumes and whatnot. So I thought, man, I would like to have a PMD that people can really enjoy. That was my dream at university. When I left, uh, I, you know, I had a relationship, I had a couple of kids, and suddenly I had these kids that I had to take care of. So I had to find a job. You know, I, was, I, was, I left university, I was unemployed, living in the settlement, and uh, looking for jobs everywhere. I walked around everywhere. And I ate one meal a day, you know, where I lived. Uh, sometimes that was just rice and butter. That, that, that's what I survived on. I made my money playing pool. I played pool to make money, you know, so I could have bus fare. You know, I lived with a group of guys, and um, we were just surviving, let's say. But with these kids, I, just, I had to find a job. And the um, first job I found was with customs, uh, just real job, you know. And I worked there, and when I was working there, about a year later, you know, I enjoyed the work, and I moved into the enforcement division. We do investigations, intelligence, border security type work, and I really enjoyed it, and I thought, man, you know, after becoming passionate about enforcing the law and protecting this country's borders and its national security, I thought I'd, I'd like to be the director one day of this particular division. And that was a vision that you had yeah, in your heart. at that time, in my heart, yeah. you know. So sometimes these things come as you move along. Yeah. You know, you don't think about them and go there. You just they come as you go along. Yeah. So when I was there, I decided to that I would like to be the director of this division, and I did become the director after a few years. You know, and after that, I thought, well, I'd like to be the, uh, I'd like to be the commissioner one day. Mm -hmm. you know? And I gave myself a 10-year 10, 10 period. And uh, on the last day of that 10-year period, I resigned. Uh, my my boss at that time was David Sodden. Yeah. He was the best boss anyone could ask for. He's a good man, honest, hardworking. He loved his country, protected him. And he he was, you know, he had to leave because of some issues that. You know, he was being targeted, he, was, he just couldn't do his job. Yeah. So he resigned. And I resigned too, because I couldn't work under anyone else. Yeah. But I didn't know that that made a submission to make me the commissioner at that time. So, yeah, I got there. And now, while working there, I was taking on transnational criminal corporations, especially logging companies and those type of characters, organized crimes. Yeah. And I realized that they really had a huge control over what happened in this country. Yeah. You know, and they were they were 